Hi there, Alana Corso, Managing Broker, Co-Founding Partner, Dwell Realtors, coming to you this week to continue my series of talking about uh, contingencies with the home purchase process, and this week addressing three of the um, more uncommon contingencies, um, sale of a, a buyer's home, uh, title, and then also lead-based paint contingency. As a quick recap, we're going to talk about, um, and if you'd like to watch um, the prior two weeks videos about contingencies where I talk about what it, go into depth about what contingencies are, um, property inspection contingency, and then also I talked about um, loan and uh, appraisal contingencies. You can see the, the links to the videos here. But again, um, a contingency is a condition. Uh, that needs to be met um, during the due diligence process when you're purchasing a home um, dictated by a time period, time frame, number of days. So this week I am tackling three of the probably more uncommon contingencies that we see here in the peninsula, um, but you know very worth addressing. Uh, the first one is sale of a buyer's property contingency. So sometimes, and a lot of people, aren't comfortable selling their house before they find their next one. Because realistically, you may not you know, know how long it will take you to buy your next home. And we don't have tons of inventory here on the peninsula. And so you don't wanna sell your house. You don't have the funds in the bank to, you need the equity from the sale of your current home in order to buy your next house. And so, you can't take the risk, and so you need to have what's called a sale for the contingency of your home in the contract. And this means that you have a certain time period. Usually it's, you know, you need at least probably three weeks to realistically get your house listed um, and, and sold. Um, and then, you know, time period beyond that to successfully close escrow so that you can get the proceeds from your current home into um, a bank account or escrow um, to, in order to buy and successfully close on your next one. So you may need that sale contingency. And unfortunately, it's one of the most um, kind of, I, I would say it's probably not an ideal contingency for a seller to accept a purchase contract with it, just because there's obviously another sale involved in it and a lot more complications and issues that can arise. Um, so it's something that is rather complicated um, and you need someone like myself to kind of really be guiding you, understanding time periods, understanding your particular situation, understanding everything about your house, what neighborhood, all of the different factors that are going on, um, and also making sure that all the numbers line up and work up in time periods to make sure that you can do it in, in the way that you really need to get it done. So rare to see because they are not super attractive here on our super competitive um, peninsula market. But again, do happen, occur. Um, you know, I'd say we see them in our office, you know, maybe you get one a month, if that. Um, and we do a fair amount of business um, in our office, as, as many people know. But again, you really need um, a strong agent that's super knowledgeable like myself to really help you navigate that process. So the next contingency that we see occasionally that's also not as common is a title contingency. And title is, you know, basically how the house is held. And then there's a preliminary title report that goes, you know, kind of understands anything that's been recorded on the house for liens, encumbrances, if there's any um, CCNRs, all these different associated things. And typically on the peninsula, most sellers obtain an open escrow, a pre-sale, and obtain a preliminary title report for buyers to review before they've listed their house for sale uh, publicly on the MLS. And they're, you know, it usually isn't an issue because you know everything that's about the title is already handed to you before you would you know, consider making an offer. That's not always the instance. And maybe a title, preliminary title report hasn't been issued to you. And so you need to request a certain number of time frame, certain number of days to obtain your own, to get the title report, 
or maybe there is an issue that was discovered in the title report and um, maybe the property hasn't finished you know transferring from uh, a decedent into you know it, it's it's there's something clouded with title that needs to be discovered and you need a time period to get that resolved before you can comfortably move forward. Um, again, could be fairly complicated, could be pretty straightforward. It's hard to know. And that's why, again, you need really kind of, you know, someone on your team helping you understand if a title contingency is applicable in, the, in your home buying situation and understanding it and letting someone like me help you know if it is or not. So the last contingency that we see kind of here, and I have to say, I don't actually think I've ever seen one in all of my, um, you know, years being in real estate and being, you know, the supervising broker for our office and, you know, reviewing all of these purchase contracts. But you do see it, especially on one of the contracts that people commonly use here on the peninsula. And this is the lead-based paint contingency. So anything that was built, you know, prior to the 70s, it's assumed it has lead-based paint on the property, right? And so, you know, we have a lead-based paint disclosure advisory about it, and there's that. But someone may want to do a lead-based paint, um, you know, inspection and or, you know, like do discovery to see if there is lead, um, you know, somewhere in the house and one of the many layers of paint down under uh, of the current level. And so that you could have a contingency to do that. And that's on the PRDS purchase contract. Um, on the car purchase contract, it would probably be associated with your property inspection contingency that I talked about in video one, but they do actually call out that lead-based paint um, contingency um, in the PRDS contract if you were using it. Again, really rare for people to use it here on the peninsula and actually put that kind of contingency in place. But maybe as a buyer, that's super important to you to understand and you just wanna understand, um, you know, what is, if there is lead-based paint in the house. Um, but again, it's something to talk about with your, your agent and your advisor to really understand if it's something that's necessary to have or not. So that's that. Um, so tackling all these different uh, contingencies, I hope you have a better understanding of what they all are. Um, again, my job is to help guide you and advise you through this process to understand what contingencies, if any, you want to have in your purchase contract when you're negotiating. Uh, reach out to me anytime with any questions. I hope you're all well, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.